Why go back and compete when you have nothing else to prove? Why put yourself through all that pain? Why take the floor when you're not at your best? Why risk tarnishing your undefeated streak? Why risk it all? I say, the risk is not a matter of winning, it's the risk of not trying. Fighting every day to become better. I don't just challenge myself on the competition floor when the lights are on. I'm grinding every single day in the dark. Putting myself out there to fail. Facing my fears of being satisfied. I'm constantly edging to be marginally better each day. Competition is the fun part. The easy part. The rewarding part of this journey. Some say I have it easy that I'm just talented, but they don't see the hard work I put in. The everyday mountain I face to be the best version of me. They don't know the hardship I have faced to reach this point today. I will keep risking it all because I know I'm going to be a better person, a better athlete, a better wife, and now a better mother for it. And you know how I said that uh, the other day was day one of training? Well, I think that was just warm up for today is day yeah. one of training. There's heaps of stuff to do. I'm in my comeback off season. You don't have your bum buster Pilates? I do actually have my bum buster Pilates, but it might be a little bit more core today. I don't know. I did core yesterday. Are you doing it? Uh, I'll try. I think the word Pilates is extended to what I remember it being. Now that you can get Pilates classes that do stretching, uh, burpees, uh, jumping jacks, you can do it all now. Pilates, yeah. So I know what the. Uh, it's not the old traditional, like, doesn't really hurt. Well, I don't know, I could be so wrong. Sorry, I don't want to offend anyone that does Pilates. Pilates has actually become. Uh, it's very hard. Quite challenging. I think the less There's one right by our favorite sushi place. Is it? This full studio. I love sushi. Which one? Yeah, so I use the weightlifting as predominantly like lower body and then the pressing for upper body. But I normally do a lower body and upper body split, but how we've got the next few weeks played out is um, we're not guaranteed a, a real progression or consistency in training. So we've just made a few adjustments here and there and I've just tried to compile a lot of the things that we notice that we need to work on post Rogue or because of Rogue and just implementing them where well, we can really Ooh. travel, baby, travel. Jerk the arms. Focus on like really finding your legs pushing through the floor, especially for your glutes. Okay. And then the bottom of the squat, coming out of the hole. Like really think about where your backside should be in relation to your shoulders. Like we don't want to shoot mum up and then like seesaw all the way up. How was it doing at the end of the No, but I'm actually keeping it straight. Oh, we're going to get a little walking. Thank you, too big.
going back to Australia? Yes, uh, so we head back to Australia next week. Um, we're going down for multiple events. So the first one that we have to talk about is the seminar. So 26th and the 25th of November, we're going to host a seminar. We actually have some spots available left. Our Instagram will have all the information there, but essentially it's a train with tier, an opportunity to work with our coaches and talk all things training. And the second event that we have is the Down Under Championship, which is taking place on the 3rd, the 2nd, and the 1st of December. So the following weekend after that, which is in Wollongong. If you want to come out to that, we're going to do some meet and greets there. We're going to host some events too with the Proven team. We've got our coaches coming out, Nick's coming out too. And then our third event, the following weekend after that, T and I are going to Dubai. It all looks the same at this point, right? <clears throat> it's a week off and then a week, the 15th. Yes. So 17th, 16th, 15th. 17th, 16th and the 15th of December, we're heading to Dubai for the Grove Games. But honestly, we got a big month ahead, but we're pretty excited about it all. Like, I think the hesitation there is just the travel being the reality, but I think once we're there and we're amongst the atmosphere and the, uh, the event, we're gonna love that. I think it's just more about getting there at this point. And we do have a third edition, which we got to travel with, and she's been a stud, so. Yeah, she travels really well. She travels yeah. better than dad. Get out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so funny. I've had a baby and I'm just really funny now. I don't know about that. <laughs> When's your cutoff going to be for traveling? Like February? March? Uh, no, December. So Dubai is going to be the last one. And then obviously I have to come back to America. But um, no more. I'm shutting it down. Do you know anything about quarterfinals? No. Like, where you no, have to I think at? yesterday, um, Nick, didn't you send something through about like when the open is? So that's in the back end of February. But do you know, like, since you live here now? Oh, yeah, no, I don't know. I haven't read the rule book. 10 deadlifts, 95%. Oh, yeah, whatever. 10 seated. So with the deadlifts, well, I just want to really do it. It's really work, the hamstring. Yep, and then sandbag hold, okay, for 30 seconds. So these- The Arnie's? Seated, and it's like- Rotate. That? Yep. What's the weight? 35, oh, 30. You may not have that. Uh, may have to step it up and do 70s. But yeah, Taylor doesn't play with anything less than 45. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen those rogue challenges, but she is a mean machine. And so there is nothing light in this gym. You can do deadlifts and... Uh, I don't know, I've been thinking about that too. I wonder if I take them outside. going to be surely I don't have to move it. And it's high. It's very high. I tell you, giant lift. So Echo Bike, Bar Masters, Row, Power Cleans. I kind of feel like it's a bit aggressive. I just don't think a minute, well, I, I don't know how much time I'll have off, but like, I think I'll get about a minute. And I, that might just not be a whole enough to, for me to recover. This time of season, do you, do you change it how you feel often? And then towards the back end? Nah, I don't change the programming. Um, I think I just feel way too guilty. Um, but I do think it is way harder this far out because there's so much time that you just, it's like you're, you're biding time essentially until it gets a bit closer and it starts like really mattering. But what I do today is going to make it better when that time comes. So it's not like it's not important. It's very crucial to actually um, stick with it and, 
and make sure that everything has purpose and I'm putting my best foot forward. But it is really challenging. like my throat when I'm unfit and not strong and I just try and throw it up there I just like keep throw it like hitting it in the back of my throat not good I haven't breathed like that since uh, Rogue there will be times where I am using the belt just to have a little bit of support but I just try not to use the belt because I can't have it tight while everything is just like still trying to activate it's still trying to fire and I'm still trying to build that strength. I, I, I would say today was actually more day one, even though I have actually been moving the body for a few days now. Today, that workout, um, even the lifting, the lifting was starting to get a little bit heavier where I had to stay engaged. Um, but that workout definitely got the lungs breathing. It, nothing was drastically terrible. It just was a combination of having to keep on that time and then of course, only having a small amount of rest. On a good day, that'd be heaps of rest, but today I needed like double that. So it was good all in all. And it's just good to be getting back into training and getting after it. Coming in hot. Oh, that nice. Very trusty, thanks to our good old rogue. Oh! Enjoy hot. The new chocolate melody. Medley. Medley. Melody's music. <laughs> that is so true. Oh, dear. O-M-G. It's that time of year where it's uh, coming under winter. Chocolate mint, chocolate chai, and chocolate raspberry. But the chocolate raspberry sounds really nice. It sounds like a cherry wrap. Have you ever had a cherry wrap before, Brandon? That's awkward. Brandon doesn't like cherry wraps. Oh, I don't need the manual. What would I change it to? Let me, maybe I don't need the manual. I also don't read the manual. I just look at the description, like the diagrams. Boils and you like hear it like start boiling and did you know that in Australia it boils way faster than here in America? How can that be true? Why does that because our wattage is higher. That smells amazing. Yeah, my mum has like the hardest hands so she can't even feel like the heat. And so now I have to have that. Yeah but your mum's also she's hard. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is actually very hard. If you've ever met my mom, you would know how hard she is. A lot of people were asking me at Rogue uh, what I felt really helped contribute to me being able to get back out on the competition floor in the short time frame that I did. Obviously, getting back in the gym was essential to my my future goals and like what I want to see myself achieve in the next 12 months. But uh, I knew in order to set myself up for success, going to Rogue was going to be a crucial part of that. Just to flush out the cobwebs, see where I was at physically. And you know, a lot of conversation in the past has always been not necessarily about my physical ability, but mental ability because everyone no matter what it is you do in your life 
your mentality and how strong you are mentally is typically an indicator on how far you're going to go. So, you know, the more resilient you are mentally, the further you're going to go, the further, the more obstacles you're going to push through and everything like that. And, you know, it's a very hot topic throughout society, I feel like, because your mental capacity is a huge component. But one of the things that I felt like contributed to, you know, my recovery contributed to me being able to back up my training, but also for performance as well. And throughout competition allowed me to um, handle the volume that I could were actually my salts from Element. I also was breastfeeding Willow and looking after Willow was a number one priority for me. And so you don't realize it and I, never, I didn't realize it until I was going through it myself, but the, like the drain that I felt when I would feed her, but then have to go straight into training, it was like immediate. However, when I was drinking my Element salts, I felt like they were giving me just new sense of energy and they were keeping me on top of that fuel that I needed to stay hydrated and to be able to back up my training and to have quality sessions, but also not hinder what Willow needed. And obviously I had a lot of help from Shane, you know, that that's a giving and, you know, I could not have gone out on Rogue or the competition floor without his help and guidance throughout the whole process. So guys, if you have any questions, I know, you know, a lot of people are just curious in general, which is awesome. Everyone's different. So what may work for me may not work for you. However, you know, be open-minded, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight on what really has helped me throughout my process getting back on out on the competition floor.